Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Enrico L. DiGiamarino, Jr., your professor for this class. Please call me Sam, everyone does. What we're going to do this, uh, during this uh, video is we're going to look at the class and cover some important information that you need uh, as you start into this course. Now a lot of people have probably told you how hard this course is. And to a certain extent, I have to agree with them. It is not an easy course. However, I will do everything I can in my power to make it easier for you to get a good grade in this class. So, you do have to do the work, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the class material. We go to the course sign-in page. Now this is for me as the instructor. You'll notice a couple things. First off, I teach more than one course. Okay. Secondly, you'll notice that for the microeconomics course, AB224, I have section one and I have section two. So the section number is important. And whenever you go to sign into your course, you'll see which section you are in. So, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and sign into one of the courses. And here we are at the course home page. Actually, let's go to the course home page. This will be the course home page. And the first thing you'll notice is that there's a number of announcements. Now, we're looking at a past course that I've taught, so we're not looking at the current one. When you sign into the course yourself, what you're going to see is a a couple of basic announcements from uh, the, the curriculum design people and then you'll have three announcements from me. You'll have the welcome announcement, you'll have the why study economics announcement, and you'll have important dates for this term. Now, I understand that you're all adults, okay? I am not going to email you every time I want you to know something. I'm going to put it in the announcements like you see here. There will always be a welcome to a unit. There will normally be a hints for an assignment. Uh, in some cases, but not always. Uh, in the more difficult assignments, I definitely try to have hints for you. Uh, also, when grades are posted, I'll let you know when grades are posted. Uh, there will be some announcements that I'll post that will be highlighted in color for some reason. If I'm going to be absent from the course for some period of time, either because I'm on vacation or I'm traveling or something, I'll let you know that, especially if there's going to be a substitute instructor teaching in my absence. Uh, and beyond that, uh, it is important that you look at the announcements each week. Uh, every time you sign into the course, if there's a new announcement, it should be noted and you should go there and look because I'm probably going to tell you something that's going to make this course easier or make it easier for you to uh, click on a particular assignment and, and accomplish that assignment. Now, uh, a couple other things we're going to notice if we go back to course home. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit of information that would be standard to the courses, uh, how to navigate, uh, what is a description of the course, what we're going to accomplish in the 10 weeks that we're there. Uh, those, so there'll be an explanation of what the course is about. Uh, also, there'll be the course outcomes. What are we expected to that you should walk away knowing whenever you finish the course? You'll notice that there's five related outcomes to economics and then there's a couple of general education literacy outcomes. Okay and then it'll tell you what resources and materials you need. Now as we proceed one of the first things you're going to want to do is go up here to the syllabus. You're going to want to take a look at that syllabus because it's going to give you some more important information. Again this is a past course so it gives a different date. Uh, it's going to give you what the term is, what the dates of the course are, again the course number and that section number which is extremely important and you'll hear why in a few minutes. Okay. Also, it will give you specific information about me. It will give you uh, my, both my university email and my personal email. The reason I give you my personal email is it shows up on my phone. So I'm much more likely to get that email immediately 
and be able to respond to it immediately where my Kaplan email I check it once or twice a day if you send your email to me right after I've checked it it may be a while before I check it again so this you know this email is going to come right to my phone so I'm going to notice it right away it's also going to tell you about office hours but more importantly it's going to tell you about our seminar time what date and time or what day of the week and what time are we having that seminar now there's a lot of other material in the syllabus that you'll want to be aware of it's going to tell you about our textbook okay the fact that it is an ebook a digital textbook and uh, but it does give you the information on it and who published it it's Paul Krugman and Robin Wells and where will you find the textbook well if you go over here to course home and you click on digital book okay, it's going to take you to the the area where you'll uh, get to the book and then once you're uh, registered properly you should be able to click on the title of the book and it should open up the book and all the chapters and you go to the chapter and you plow through it okay now a lot of people are going to say that they could they really would like something physical in their hand you can print the pages that you need to read uh, you and I would suggest that if you do that you set your printer on uh, on uh, you know draft printing so that you're not wasting more ink than you need and even when there's a picture you may want it only in black and white so you're not wasting valuable color ink up to you obviously uh, another thing that some students have done is they've gone online since this book was published a few years ago uh, they've gone online and they'll find it there and uh, they can get it as a used book so if we go back to the syllabus you'll see that the book is actually published in 09 okay I think it's yeah, anyhow you can look that part up okay uh, the basic economics doesn't change a whole lot so uh, again you have a description of the course you have a listing of your course outcomes and the general education literacy outcomes uh, and then there's a, an explanation of each one of the units what's going to be accomplished in it and uh, and then you get to the grading area and you'll notice our discussions there are 10 discussions so there is a discussion in unit 10 each discussion is worth 25 points so there's 250 of your points right there and I'll talk about how I'm going to grade that in just a few minutes okay another thing I want you to note is there are 10 seminars so in this course there is a seminar in unit 10 again each one is worth 15 points so now we have 150 points accumulated. Now you'll notice that we have some assignments. We have five of them that are worth 40 points each and four that are worth 80 points each. The reason for this, we have this course now divided into units. A unit it depends on what the learning objective is. The first unit that we're going to do is going to be it's going to include units or weeks one, two, and three. Okay. And the week three, the assignment for week three is going to cover weeks one, two, and three. So you will have had an assignment in unit one, you'll have another assignment in unit two covering new material in each one of those. Then in unit three you're going to have more new material but you'll have an ass your assignment will include questions that will cover materials from units one, two, and three. Okay. Then we have units four and five with unit five covering uh, weeks uh, covering the material from four and five. And then we go to unit six. Unit six or week six is by itself. Then we go to the next one, which is week seven and eight. And again, I call a week a unit. Um, so seven will be worth, the assignment for unit seven will be worth 40 points. It will cover new material. Then in unit eight, you'll have, or week eight, you'll have more new material. 
but the assignment for unit 8 will be worth 80 points because it will cover material from both week 7 and week 8. We do the same thing in week 9. We have new material in week 9. Then in week 10, instead of having an assignment, you actually have an auto-graded quiz. The quiz will cover the same material. It will cover new material from Unit 10 or Week 10 and a review or uh, some material from Week 9. Okay. The only difference is that in the exam and the assignments is I will not be grading the exam, which again only covers Weeks 9 and 10. It will be auto-graded because we don't have very much time to do massive amount of grading in that last week before grades have to be submitted to the registrar's office. Okay, so that should be a simple matter. Now let's talk about discussions for a minute. Uh, many of you may be familiar with discussions. As a matter of fact, there is an explanation of the discussion grading rubric further down in the uh, here it is, further down in the syllabus. Okay, uh, You'll notice that 40% of your grade is going to be measured on the discussion topic uh, or your posts on topic and all, you know, in other words, how have you covered the material. Uh, participation grading, your initial post must be no later than Saturday at midnight. If, it's, if your first post comes later than Saturday at midnight, say Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, you're going to lose a few points. Uh, you must post on three different days. Okay. So again, the second thing I'm going to look at, first thing I'm going to look at is, is your post by Saturday. Second thing I'm going to look at is, is your post on three different days. Okay. Then I'm going to look to see if you have posted to at least two of your classmates. Okay. And I'm not sure where that shows, but to be active in the discussion, it's not enough to answer the question, but you must also post to your classmates. So I'm expecting to see at least two posts to two different classmates. Okay. Uh, and then we'll notice that one of the requirements, let's see where I can find where it is, okay, is that references were cited. Okay, we're used and properly cited. Uh, so I'm going to look at the bottom of your, of your post that answers the week's question and look to see if there is a reference there. If there is, then you get those points. If there isn't, you lose those points. Now notice, I didn't say anything about grading your answer. Okay, how do we go about that? Well, first off, I consider the discussion thread area to be a learning environment, not a testing environment. Okay? As such, if don't I don't want you to be afraid that you may say something that is not technically correct in answering the discussion question and in interacting with your classmates. Now I would expect that you've read the material and that you're uh, knowledgeable on the material and what you talk about is appropriate. Okay? However, if you do say something wrong, I'm not going to knock off points for that. Okay? What I'm more concerned with is that you interact with your classmates because in this course, like any other course, you will learn as much, if not more, from discussing with your classmates as you will from me as your instructor. So, uh, don't be afraid of your answer. But I am looking for your answer to be on topic. Okay? And and of value, if you will. I want it to contribute to the discussion. So a flippant comment like, gee, you did a good post. That's not an acceptable post to get full credit for. Okay? Your post must explain on topic what you're, what you're talking about. Now, I mentioned about the references. Okay? In your post that answers the question, it is important that you have at least one reference. Okay. Figure that you at least had to look at the textbook in order to be able to answer the question. So therefore, that would be your reference. Otherwise, you may have gone to a website. In that case, that would be your reference. So 
gives you something to look at. So that's how I'm going to handle discussions. A uh, couple other things. Uh, what about your textbook? Okay, we said earlier that your textbook is a, uh, and we looked at that, so we've covered that. Okay, so we went out to the digital book and we looked at it, so we don't have to go and do that again. Okay, get rid of that. Uh, instructor's office or virtual office. Okay, we'll go to the virtual office. And of course, you see an explanation there. Uh, when you sign in, you should see a post from me that uh, gives some basic information. Okay. Again, it gives my personal email. It also gives my university email. Uh, and more importantly, it gives my phone number so that you have a way to get a hold of me. Do not be afraid to call me. Now, I mention that because over here on the side, okay, you'll notice that there's uh, access to the Kaplan Library. Uh, you're probably familiar in the course page that there's access to tutoring through the university, through the School of Business. Uh, that's fine, but you might find it more useful if you contacted me if you had a question on the course, because specifically, I know what I'm looking for, and I know how to guide you in that direction. Okay. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call me or send me an email. And a lot of times I can talk about a topic a lot better than I can type a message. So it may be easier for us to talk. So don't be afraid to do that. So now let's go look at one of the, uh, well, I want to look at a couple things. Okay, let's go to a unit. Okay, and we'll look at unit three and some things here. Uh, in the home area, which is where we're at, we're going to get an overview for that particular unit. It's going to tell us what we're going to cover. Of course, we have the unit outcomes, specifically what you should understand when you walk away from that particular week. Okay, and which course outcome of the five that we're practicing in this particular unit. So we know what that is. Okay, and. Uh, You'll have a to-do list, which gives you a, just a, a checklist, if you will, of things that you need to accomplish. Now, there's an Academic Tools tab. And again, there are several things here that will be helpful to you. Okay? Uh, if you, have inform if you, you know, are not sure how to navigate, if you, how do you handle the Dropbox, things like that. So technical information. It also gives you links to the Math Center, the, the uh, Science Center, the Writing uh, information service writing center so definitely have that available to you now in the reading icon of course we're going to click on the reading and it's going to tell us what chapter is due that week and what additional reading now one thing that I want to mention is that there's it will also mention flashcards okay and the flashcards it says go to doc sharing if you haven't used the flashcards and look at the document that says PDF, uh, flashcards PDF. So if we go to doc sharing, there's going to be a bunch of things there that are going to be helpful to you. As you scroll down, you'll find here's the viewing flashcards document. Okay. And you'll notice that most of these are available to the entire class. A couple other things I mentioned earlier in the announcements that I often put hints documents out. So here you'll see there in some cases the hints are contained within the announcement. In other cases the, the hints announcement will tell you to go to doc sharing and download the particular hints document. That means it's a more involved document than I can just put easily in the announcements. So this way you can open it up, save it to your computer, and you'll have access to it. Okay, going back to our unit. So if we click on the reading icon, uh, it's going to tell us which chapter. It tells us a little bit about that. Uh, and then it mentions that there are videos that you need to watch in some of the weekly units. Okay, so in this case, in week three, there are a number of YouTube videos that I created that will help you understand supply and demand. So you're going to be looking at uh, one, two, three, four, five, five 
so I've, there is actually a total of nine videos but six seven six and seven don't really apply to this particular week I'm going to use them in a different week so we'll tell you when to go look at them so all you have to do is click on the link and it opens up the the video and gives you the material that you need to know so again this is additional material to help you understand the the whatever that particular unit is not all weeks materials has videos in so uh, the presentation part this is material provided by the authors okay and so you can go through their slides and just look at them you know click through them and go through that material now I will tell you the author provided material is not necessarily geared exactly to the questions that you have to answer in this course it is material you need to learn as part of the economics milieu but it's not necessarily going to answer the particular material for that assignment so yes it's part of your reading it's part of the material you need to understand but it is not necessarily going to answer your question my hints are what are going to help you answer the questions okay so you want to make sure you do the reading and uh, and cover that material so we go back to the course home under the discussion area now there is an explanation of the topic for discussion you'll notice that in week three we're going to be talking about marijuana and we're going to be talking about the economic impact of legalizing marijuana but in order to access the discussion you have to come over here to this area and click on the discussion part over here now normally you will find that the very first post is going to be from me oops not that one let's see a minute where is it here it is okay so the very first post is going to be from me and it's going to be highlighted and sometimes I even include a video or a link that I want you to go to okay that will help you with that particular question so uh, again when you get through you want to make sure you read whatever post I put when I indicated it's to everyone other times I'll be posting to you as a response to your question okay so that takes us to the discussion uh, assignments okay one of the first things you're going to see in in the, the assignment when you click on the assignment link is it's going to tell you to download the assignment template okay from doc sharing okay and it's going to tell you give you some other general information okay if we go back to doc sharing up here under the assignment templates area when you click on that you're going to have a number of assignment templates so if you were to click on the unit 3 assignment template because that happens to be the unit we're looking at right now it's going to open up in a word document of course you need to enable editing otherwise you can't make any changes to the template but notice the general instructions the very first general instruction tells you that you must rename the document on your computer and submit it with a certain name okay in this case it's going to be what I want you to recognize is it's going to have the course number and underline the section number that we were talked about earlier what section is this course Okay. then another underline it's going to have oops it's going to have then your last name another underline and then your first name okay. and then another underline and then the unit number which is the week that we're dealing with okay and so in this case we already know the week is three okay. now why am I so specific about wanting the course your document saved on your computer that way the reason is that that document then is going to get uploaded to uh, you're going to upload it to the Dropbox and when I go to open the document I'm going to be saving it on my computer okay so that I can go find it okay? and I would be looking at something like this okay uh, so I go to assignment downloads and now I have all the assignment from all the students arranged by course number 
section number, their last name, their first name, and what the week is. And I can go back and find the particular document when I need it, okay, based on what course they're in, what section they're in, and what week it is. So it's important that you save the document correctly on your computer so when you upload it to my, to the Dropbox and I get it, I can find it. The second general instruction tells you to fill out this information at the top of the page. Your name, the course number, the section number, the unit number is given to you, and then what date you're submitting it. So all that information is going to be over here, uh, you know, past the, the little hyphen. What it means is when I go to open a document, I'm seeing your name and I'm comparing it to the document name so that I know who I'm dealing with. Okay, I know which student I'm answering or evaluating. Okay, uh, There's some more general instructions. It tells you to insert your answers. Notice item 4. It says make sure you provide a list of references at the end of the last page. Every assignment must have at least one reference, if only to the textbook. Okay, And then it tells you what to do. Now, another thing, you'll notice that there may be some charts. There may be some graphs. We provide the graphs. You don't have to create any graphs, okay? but you need to be able to discuss them and explain them. Okay? Now, you would be able to just go in and start inserting your answer in here if, this, you know, if you're answering the questions. Okay? And then you can save the document to your computer. So you don't have to create a new document. You can merely insert your answers. And likewise, uh, any graphs are provided. Okay, here you have a chart. If there's a blank space in the chart, I'm looking for some kind of numbers that are going to go in that. Okay, so you're going to have to come up with whatever the correct answers are. Uh, notice at the end, there's going to be a reference, a, a place for you to put your reference. So you can list it here. Uh, in this particular course, although we adhere to the APA format, I am not necessarily a stickler that when you insert your references into the uh, assignment templates that they be in exactly APA format. I'm not really that much of a stickler for that in this particular case. So just as long as there's a reference there. Notice that there is a grading rubric with every assignment. It tells you how the points are divvied up. You'll notice that the uh, Unit 3 assignment is worth 80 points. Notice that having the correct information at the top of the first page, in other words your name and all that, is worth 4 points and having at least one reference is worth 4 more points. So out of your 80 points you can grease these points really easily. So you can get 16 of the 80 before you've even answered a question. Now you come down and answer the questions. Now, a problem, and again, you see how, how many points, or what percentage of the total each point, each question is worth, and how many points you actually get for the question. Now, remember this. If there is no answer to the question, I have to give zero points. If the answer is wrong, I can give maybe 40 or 50 percent of that Okay, so you might be able to get, you might have an answer pretty much wrong and still out of the eight points be able to get four points because you were generally in the ballpark. Okay, so you don't get zero, but if you have no answer to the question, I must give you zero points for it. So, uh, that's how to do the templates. Once you've, again, saved the template to your computer repeatedly, so there's no chance of having a situation where you've gotten answers in and then you lose them because you didn't save it. So, okay, cancel, don't save. We don't need that. Okay, so back to the course. So, we've looked at the assignment templates. Uh, also, I will be posting my seminar slides. You get to them up here. And so you'll find the slides available. These are PowerPoint slides. So, and again, I, most often I post them the week that I'm putting this, doing the seminar. Sometimes I post them in advance. Okay. And so if you were to open that, it would be a, uh, a PowerPoint slide document. And, and it would
would just pop up and then you could take a look at it. Okay, we're not going to spend time doing that now. Okay, what else do we need? Let's see, well, I want to make sure we talked about tutoring, we talked about virtual office, talked about the assignment, we talked about how important it is to have the correct uh, name on your document. Uh, seminar. Let's go back and talk about the seminar for a minute. Okay. Uh, the seminar link will tell you what's going on in that particular seminar and remember that the seminars are graded. If for some reason you cannot make the seminar then there is an alternative assignment that you can do. Okay. And basically you write a page, a paper that uh, in this case it's a one page paper double spaced that summarizes the seminar. Okay, So what you would have done is you would have gone to the recording of the seminar and you know gone to it there and uh, and then summarize it. Now I'm going to tell you it's much more effective if you attend the seminar and that way you can ask questions. Uh, you can ask questions right during the seminar. But we're all adults here and if it's not, if you, for something comes up and you're just not able to make it, you've got to take the child to the emergency room or whatever. Uh, that's understandable. Just do the alternate assignment or let me know. Okay, so we talked about the seminar. Are we missing anything? No. Okay, so we got all that taken care of. By the way, uh, to a uh, to actually attend the seminar, normally when now this is this is future classes, so the course hasn't started yet. Uh, but this area would be a live link, which tells what the seminar. There'll be a link here that'll tell you the seminar time, when the next seminar is available for that course. You click on it, and it takes you to the seminar. Uh, if you click on it other than 30 minutes before the seminar or up to uh, or until the seminar ends any other time it's going to take you to the archived recordings of the seminars so uh, you'll find that whenever you go to uh, another thing you can do is when you click on the course you can go down here and click on my seminars and it will take you to all the archived recordings so that's where you would get to that so that's pretty much how we're going to handle the course. That tells you most everything you need to know. If you have any questions, please get in touch with me and uh, we'll see.